Welcome to Some Guy's Garage. As you know, I have a Nikon Z30 that I recently got and had mentioned that the image stabilization on it hasn't been great. And so in comes the DJI RS3. So this is a gimbal that can connect to an SLR camera and hopefully is going to stabilize things for me. So today we're gonna to take a look at it, you know, first unboxing like I normally do, and then uh, have a look through the features and how it works and see if it solves some of those problems. So let's get started. All right, unboxing. So they have these cool little pull tabs that, well, that one didn't quite work. I was hoping these would be kind of neat, but let's see there. Yeah, they don't quite pull all the way. Let me grab a knife. So we'll open this thing up. Okay, inside, just first glance here. So we're inside of a pouch. So similar to their drones, they just come inside a pouch and there's nothing else in the box. So that's kind of nice, it just comes in a carrying case here. We'll tear this thing open. And so there is the case. Unzip. And carefully fold open. Okay, we'll go that way with it. So some foam packaging. There's the gimbal itself. And it looks like, if we undo that, a little more foam packaging and some more stuff on the other side. So I'm gonna leave the foam to the side here. I might still reuse that. But let's start with, let's start with the pouch here and with the, presumably the manuals. So quick start guide. I believe those have something to do with the focus motor. USB cables, these look like USB-C. The rods, I think those go with the focus motor as well. Some mounting hardware of some sort. More USB cables. These are regular old USB to USB-C. And uh, some little strap of some sort. Not quite too sure what that is. So that's all that comes out of that one pouch. Flip it over here, see what's on the other side. Nothing in there. And here, that looks like that's gotta be the focus motor itself. So that's the motor, that's part of the combo. So this is the RS3 combo, not just the gimbal. So it comes with the extra focus motor and some extra handles as well. Put that down here. So I'll put it back in the bag just to keep it safe. Here, next pouch on the back side of it. So that's the, the tripod that you can use to set it down. Um, interesting that it opens that. I guess that sits flat when you have it down on a table like this. Um, so that's a thing to sit it on. We have what looks like the maybe the backpack grip, not the main grip, but the, or I don't know if it's called backpack or briefcase, sorry, grip that lets you hold it at a lower angle. We have, that looks like probably a camera mount of some sort and something to help you balance it. Uh, and somewhere for the focus motor to attach, but I imagine the camera attaches here on the top of this. Hang on. So that is a grip and feels like it has the battery in it. So it probably goes like this. And that's the battery for the actual unit here. And that's all for those pouches. And then finally, the gimbal itself is here. Velcro down, heavier than I expected it to be, but looks like it goes roughly, it's in locked position right now, I'd imagine. Um, but looks like you roughly hold it there. So there's the screen on the back of it and you'll hold it here and it unfolds. So I'm gonna go and make sure everything's charged and working and get this thing assembled and then I'll meet you back here and we'll take a closer look at how it works. So it's been a couple days, but we're back. Uh, it took me a little while to figure out just how everything works and wanted to get kind of comfortable with it. But I'll give you a quick breakdown, not that it's broken, but a breakdown of roughly how it all goes together. Um, briefcase handle attaches here at the side. This is part of the combo kit. The tripod at the bottom here is just screwed in. So it's a standard um, quarter 20 threaded mount. So that's uh, possible to connect other types of accessories there. There's also a second threaded mount up on the handle here for connecting other accessories too. And then the battery itself is part of the grip here. So in the handle is where the actual battery lives. And there's a quick release here that you kind of have to two-step there to pull apart. And then to reconnect, it's just a push and locks away right away. The rest of the upper pieces is all kind of one piece here. So from the screen, which is on the back here, all the way up through the different gimbals and motors. There's actually three motors. So one in the base here, motor here and motor here, but this is all one piece. 
The only other thing that does come apart is the camera itself. So the camera obviously has to mount on a plate here. And it's actually fairly simple to remove the camera. So you unlock there. There's a secondary lock there and then the camera will come off. So that's how the camera is mounted onto the gimbal itself. And I have my Z30 mounted here. Further to that, it's all off right now and the axes are locked. So there's a lock here, a lock here, and a lock here on the backside that you can't see. So that keeps all the axes stable when it's kind of put away and you're not using it. Um, and that's one of the big upgrades on the RS3 versus previous versions is those locks are all automatic. So when we do go to turn it on, just holding the button here, all those will unlock and the gimbal will straighten itself out automatically. And similarly, when you put it away, press and hold the power button and it goes away and locks all the axes automatically. In terms of getting it set up, you do need to balance all the axes manually to begin with. So there's unlocks, uh, I'll show you here on the other side. So there's an unlock here, one here, and then one here, as well as one for the camera itself. So all four of those need to get balanced. And the entire point of that is, um, so if I manually unlock the gimbal here, so I'm gonna do this without the power assist, but it's unlocked now. The point is, and mind you, I usually have it with the screen out, so I'll get the screen out here as well. The point is that you're able to move the gimbal essentially to any position, and it more or less stays put. So the motors aren't fighting anything, it's just to get it all balanced. That's really what you're going through when you're balancing a gimbal, is setting it up so that everything's fairly neutral and getting the center of gravity so that the camera itself does not move and the motors aren't trying to directly hold it, they're just trying to get it to stay flat or stable or whichever orientation you've left it in. So the only other feature I haven't really shown is the focus motor and that's not mounted on here. It mounts kind of on the side right there. There's a, a couple holes you can see right here to actually mount the, the focus motor. You can also use this for not just focusing, but also zoom. So on this camera, um, there's a control ring, but you could also use it to control the zoom. And let me just grab the little ring here. So there's these plastic kind of geared rubbery rings that you actually mount onto the, to the camera itself. This seems a little, I don't know, hokey. It seems weird, but I don't know how else they would do it to keep it universal. Like you wouldn't have to get a specific um, focus motor for each one or something like that. It is a little strange, but um, you know, I wanted the combo kit, so I had the option being able to do um, focus or zoom from the gimbal controls itself. So that's what that's for. Anyway, so that's a basic look at how the thing physically is put together. Let's now take a look at how it operates. So I'm gonna power the gimbal on here. It's a press and hold on the side and you'll see it centers itself up automatically when it turns on. And just to start off, I'm gonna walk through a few of the different key settings on the back here. So basic settings here, there is a screen once it's turned on um, shows basically your stabilization settings and how fast it's gonna move. It also has a switch on the side here to change those modes. So we're in PF mode right now. There's PTF and FPV, so first person view. So the long and short of each of these, I'll show them actually functioning in a minute, but first person view basically moves all three axes. PTF moves two of the axes, so it'll let the camera both pan and tilt but won't let it rotate side to side. And then pan PF will only pan the camera. So as you turn, it'll move that way, but if you tilt or rotate, it won't actually do anything. There's a joystick, so you can use that to control the movement of the camera. There's also a record button. It's actually Bluetooth pairs to the camera and it works with this Nikon Z30. So you can start and stop recording from the camera itself and also have an option button on the uh, as well that you can set to a few different things. And then around the front here, there is a trigger button, which does a few different functions. So centers the camera, switches the views, and then there is a zoom, or you can set it up right now. I have it set up to tilt. So it gives you your other axes that the joystick doesn't give you. On the screen, it is a touch screen. There are a few other different things. So your different settings menus and stuff like that are in here. Let's you set up uh, the camera properly as well as being able to choose all the joystick speeds and dial speeds and things like that. So being able to set up the gimbal to do what you want it to do. So just after getting everything balanced, the one thing you do need to do with these is do a calibration. There's a setting in here and it gives the camera basically a little wiggle in all the different axes. And as it's doing that, it's figuring out the balance points and just calibrating it to be uh, extra smooth, let's say. Knows the weights, knows how it's going to move. 
So it just takes a moment here and runs through calibration. And then once it's calibrated, you'll be able to see on the screen here, um, it has the different settings and this is in the new super smooth setting. So uses a little more motor torque, but keeps the camera extra stable. Then finally, let's just kind of walk through the modes quickly. I'm on PF right now. So this is the one that just does pan. So you can see as I move the camera around, it will follow that. Um, I'm just going to center it up here, but yeah, it follows the camera around panning. But if I lift the gimbal or tilt the gimbal, it doesn't actually move. So it keeps the camera steady in those directions. If I switch to PTF, so this one adds the tilt function, as I move down, the camera will move down and the camera will move up along with my movements and same still side to side. So it tracks those movements as well, but doesn't track the rotation axis here. And finally, FPV will track all the axes. So it'll move with me as I rotate, move with me as I go up and down, but also on the rotation. There are a few other custom modes in the thing. So a roll mode, a portrait mode, and custom that you can set up to do a few different things, um, but probably are going to be less used than the default modes. And that's why they have those on the switch versus in the screen. In terms of stability though, it is actually quite impressive. So as you can see, as I'm moving around here, the camera stays just perfectly flat, doesn't move at all. And if you've seen this on say, DJI's drones, um, it's very similar in that sense. The camera is extremely stable through movements of the um, control surfaces themselves. So we'll make shots quite a bit cleaner and more stable rather than doing things handheld and just relying on the stabilization either in the lens or the body of the camera. This camera body doesn't have stabilization, so having the extra three degrees of stabilization through the gimbal should and does make a big difference. Here's some actual stabilized footage with the gimbal movements shown in the bottom left corner. As you can see, regardless of how I move the gimbal itself, the shots stay perfectly level. This is on the PF or pan follow setting, which is probably the most commonly used stabilization. It's worth noting, however, that the gimbal will not stabilize vertical movements. So if you move the entire gimbal up or down, these will still show up in the shot. Similarly, if you move closer or further away, these will also show up. This is more apparent when you are close to what you are filming, rather than further away if you're, say, tracking a vehicle driving by. But it's something to be aware of. Anyway, that's my first quick look at the DJI RS3 gimbal. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you aren't already subscribed, please consider it. And as always, thanks for watching.